if you take the world growth and African growth, Africa behaves always better than the average, in spite of uh, the tension in Egypt, in spite of uh, uh, the problem you had in you have in South Africa, in spite of a lot of, of, of problems. You know, when you think that uh, average growth 2013 is 4.8 points and uh, expected next year more than five or, or let's say around five you know you have a picture that is clearly better than 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 in any other um, part of the world you know in the other side of the of the coin you have uh, even in this case unique in the world a uh, perspective of increase of population that is completely different from other continents you know and uh, the rate of birth is in many countries not changing, different from, let's say, other countries. And because of the infant mortality is decreasing, you have an increase in population that is absolutely more than expected. And uh, uh, clearly, the problem of job creation comes as the number one problem, absolutely number one problem. In, but uh, 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 I repeat, internal demand, export of raw materials, and in the last years, an inflow of, uh, of uh, uh, foreign direct investments that was inexistent before. When we look at that, we immediately touch the role of China in Africa, uh, because uh, on the emerging countries, uh, uh, China has a peculiar role in, in Africa. Also because it's the only country that in this moment plays a continental strategy. Because there are too many countries, small countries, and it's difficult to have an economic development without a continental picture. And China is interpreting this not only as diplomatic relation with 51 or 50 countries, I don't even remember. You know, China has, you know, a, a global uh, continental policy and then uh, it will be important uh, for the future also because there is another characteristic uh, of uh, um, the new uh, strategy that is the only country in the world exporting, uh, especially to Africa, exporting uh, goods, capital, technology and people creates a unique mixture that change the type of penetration of the country, you know. So I, I have chosen these figures, you know, to, to arrive to my first point that uh, if you want to have uh, an African growth, a, a renaissance, you need a continental view. Let's say you need uh, a, a full economic integration. I think that without uh, uh, a continental policy, uh, uh, the 54 markets are too small for any type of industrial development. Foreign direct investment are very concentrated, not only in sectors, let's say raw materials, but also in very few countries. Uh, agriculture is in Africa now, even now the main source of employment. 60% uh, of Africa depend on agriculture, but only 25% of African GDP, it comes out from agriculture. So the picture is very clear. If you want to prolong the development, you have to move people from countryside, uh, let's say from farm agriculture to, to the city. Uh, third uh, problem, uh, not only uh, uh, you have small national economies, but also even in the biggest countries, you have uh, uh, so poor infrastructure that you cannot count on a big homogeneous national market. Last point linked to all of that is uh, uh, education. Uh, education improved uh, uh, the student multiplied since the, the 70s five times, but uh, still is a lower level compared to other continents. And uh, uh, it's important that all the African community um, will uh, 
join the effort of the Sahel countries because we cannot make a policy without uh, thinking to these basic problems. Thank you.